you know? Just like, in a way, lie, but try not to, because I don't want to lie, but I have to, because people are impulsive and instinctual and guarded and defensive and they don't like to be sold to, but they love to buy shit. And so in order for them to know that you have shit for them to buy, you have to find a way to capture their attention and then somehow create value for them while also wanting something in return, which is their engagement. And that's weird. related to work, but when we were at Hearth and Home, we saw two domesticated rabbits that had clearly been let outside inappropriately, and uh, spent like 15 minutes trying to catch them. Oh, it's a camera! <laughs> yeah, anyway, I didn't catch them, but I did get to feed them banana. Nice. <laughs> wow. That would have been a great promotion for piece. Yeah. Dude, if I would have caught those two rabbits, I would have been over the moon about it. So, what I would like to do is I also spent some time brainstorming names for the show because it needs a name better than the show because that's not a name. Daily Genius Live. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I understand. I want to hear the other ones. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Live AF. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I don't think we can run with that one, but I like that one the most so far. <laughs> okay, the next one is MGI On Demand. Oh, not bad. That's yeah. Good. Systemize or vaporize. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of uh, H3, H3 Productions' Vape Nation video. And those are the ones they came up with. I like Live AF the best. Yeah, I like that one the best as well. The other one though was the, the one. there was one with yeah. MGI in it. MGI On Demand? That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty like good. Well, let's play with that one for a second because MGI is kind of weird. First of all, nobody knows what it is and I don't want to brand a second company. Mm -hmm. So we can't use MGI. Like our clients can and people who know us and we can use it. Yeah. But like we're marketing here. We yeah. can't use MGI. Now we have to penetrate the market with a whole new thing for people to know. So, so it needs to be like on Genius demand. On Demand. Oh, okay, yeah. Right? Genius, genius on, on Demand, sorry, right, yeah. Like, yeah. That represents us. I think Genius On Demand is a better version of that. Yeah. Live AF is pretty good, but only only once they know the context. And we want to own the word are. Genius. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. I think Genius On Demand is... Yeah, I think that's a good one. Alright, let's go with that. Make three lists, spend five minutes on it, no longer. And so then basically they're saying if you build these three big ass lists, every marketing thing you do from then on becomes a function of taking one column plus the other column plus the other column and then wrapping it in a story. Okay. Five minutes on the clock. I need to pee first. <laughs> <coughs> are we the marketing department at Rick? We are now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's evolving. Go. They have goals. Okay. They know what they're doing every day and a clear path to get there. Someone to call when things break. A team of people with experience in execution. We're polymathic so we can execute on a variety of projects, not just... So less conflicting yeah. opinions. Uh, the processes get defined. They end up, yeah, so they end up with, like the, the value of their company goes up dramatically. A company with a process manual versus a company without one can be worth twice as much. They don't want to market because they don't believe in themselves. They don't like the idea that by building a plan, they lose their flexibility and their freedom. They're afraid of delegation. They don't trust people, so they're going to have to trust people. That's something that they're afraid of. They're going to have to be okay iterating and not having to be perfect the first time. They're going to have to become clear and decide what it is they want instead of living in the world of possibility even if you've never written a business plan before. Even if you think you can't afford it or you can't invest in the team to help you. Even if you think you don't know what you're doing. Even if you're just starting out and you don't feel sophisticated. I don't have time to stop and plan. Even if you think you don't have time to stop and plan. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, thanks team.
We didn't do any meeting Snapchats. Meeting Snapchats? Meeting Snapchats. Is that recommended? It's just something that in general I avoid, but absolutely I'm going to start doing. Is like a ceaseless promotion of self in a way that's both humble and narcissistic. Both praising and yet totally balanced. Totally pleasing of others, but really entirely my own voice. We're going to strike a perfect balance of all of those things in telling the world about how great it would be to work with us. Well, lovingly making them aware of the drawbacks, but not in a way that would discourage them from reaching out and expressing interest in who we are and what we can do to help them and transform their lives into whatever hell, or from whatever hell they're in to whatever heaven they want to be at. <laughs> but in saying that, I make it sound like I'm the only person who has any drawbacks because most other people aren't going around being like, hey, I'd love to work with you and just so you know, it's going to be difficult, tumultuous, painful, likely something that causes you to feel insecure and anxious, neurotic, um, confused and overwhelmed with data. You're going to be challenged by my bluntness and me calling you out on the shit that you have to face in your life to become the leader that you need to be in order to make progress and to develop your acumen of leadership which involves making other people aware of drawbacks and negotiating and fuck. It's just like this thing. And so I want to grow my company and so I need to promote. And promoting is a complicated topic. I didn't have enough lunch. We need to hide snacks in this vehicle. I'm gonna ask Jason if he has any snacks. Oh Do you have any snacks? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you have any snacks? <laughs> Throw some clip bar at you. <laughs> Is that your own? I got a couple more in the truck. Do you? Yes. Thanks. Let me ask you this question. Um, where are you, where would you feel most comfortable injecting this product offer in the sequence? Because there's kind of two ways to approach handling lead acquisition for the company moving forward, yeah. which is to generate interest first in the company and then retarget with specific offers based on those who've expressed interest and in how they've behaved, right. or sell at a product level and try to basically capture cold traffic and then position a product and sell the product and that becomes the gateway to the company. I think we should sell the company and that gives us a whole world of targeting and lead acquisition options, but it means we're, we're, we're going through multiple campaign steps to get them to actually being qualified into a product category for a purchase, Can right? Can not do both? Yeah. It's just, yeah, then it just comes down to sequencing of effort, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a rabbit hole if we go the product way first, because here's the risk. We've done a landing page for a specific product. Now we're going to put that on the shelf. You've had sunk capital labor costs there. Yeah. And now we're going to put another funnel out there for a product. And then when we run that ad set until we have ad fatigue or it's the wrong season or you want to switch focuses, that goes on the shelf. And then it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? We kind of get stuck being the cobbler's cobbler's son, you know, with the whole buying cheap shoes every month instead of a good pair every year. Like there's a really well-proven traffic acquisition strategy for service-based businesses here in Calgary that I've talked to in your industry, but nobody's really will willing to jump in and do it, right. which is to do the, um, it's called carpet bombing, and I've mentioned it to you a couple yeah. times. Carpet bombing is basically a strategy where we build a Facebook campaign, two Facebook campaigns. Mm -hmm. The first Facebook campaign is a video. The only targeting we do on this is demographic. We don't do any uh, postal code restriction. Then what happens is people either watch the video or don't watch the video. Right. So this ad runs, and then we do a second ad with the offer. And this ad is targeted to anyone who watched 75% or more of that video. If you were to say, Alexander, moving into 2018 as a service-based provider, what would you do to sell my company? I would answer with this, 100%. I would not do landing pages. I would not do Google at all. I would put a pause on all like, of that. And we don't, why bother guessing who your audience is when we can target literally everybody in Calgary and have them opt in basically so by watching 75% of the video. Thanks for the snack. Here's your paper. You're welcome. You really gamble on these two o'clock meetings, Warren. Yeah, I wasn't 
was wondering. I was like, he's coming. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I figured it. That was good. There was a couple of good bits there, but I don't know if they're useful or not.